Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I hope you guys have been going back and watching some of the things that I've done. Um, this is the final video in the collection series. Uh, well, you know, for right at this moment that I'm filming this because the collection is always changing. I'm always adding things, taking things away. Um, but for the most part, um, it looks like my collecting of knives is slowing down because I'm really getting into more of the making. Um, so for that, please check me out at Aries EDC. Um, I share a lot of the things that I'm making and the things that are going on with the knives that I'm creating. And a lot of the money that I get from that goes right back into making more knives. Um, although I'm not going to say that I'm not collecting anymore, but I am. So anyway, enough babbling with that. Let's get on with this. Um, please um, subscribe. Please go check out some of my older videos. This is the last video of the series. So go back. If you this is your first time checking in, go back to the first one. And then find number two, three, four, five, six. And this is number seven. And this is all about fixed blades. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about my fixed blade collection. Um, there aren't too many. Uh, I never really thought I would be a fixed blade guy and now I'm making fixed blades. So I, and there's a story and I've kind of shared the story and I'm going to do it again in here because a knife that I'm going to share with you is part of that story. But, um, go back Watch some of my other videos because I've shared that story more in depth than what I'm going to do on this video um, because I really want to just show you the knives that are in the collection and talk to you a little bit about them and what they are. Um, a lot of them are knives that I have made or um, makers that I have met, uh, especially one. So let's go ahead and get started. So what do you say? Um, let's start with something crazy. Um, so... Let's start with this. So this is a large Bowie style knife that my uh, stepdaughter and her boyfriend got me. They had my initials engraved in it. Um, it is a stainless from China and it was just a cool knife. They knew I liked knives. So I was getting into that and they decided to get this for me. Um, it's it's pretty cool, full tang blade, uh, wooden handle, big old lanyard hole for to put any lanyards, some nice three sixteenths pins. Um, it is comfortable to hold, gives me a full full handle grip. Uh, the finger holes are perfect for anything. It's just a little bit big than anything I'm probably ever gonna carry this blade or ever be put in a situation where I need something that big. Uh, as I've explained several times, I'm more of a small fixed blade guy. And uh, you'll see that with the blades that I have purchased for myself. But um, so this is one that they got me and I really like it because it does have my initials on it. So that is one that's gonna be sticking around for quite some time. The next one was also a gift, uh, very interesting. Um, so it has this nice handle, which supposedly my daughter bought this for me and the guy said that he handmade it, which I can, I can uh, vouch for that since there's a large crack in the handle. Uh, but I mean, it's handmade and I've worked with wood and sometimes that happens. Um, so I'm not real sure what happened there, but the thing with this one, is that blade shape. <laughs> it is a really upswept Persian style blade shape. Uh, very interesting. Again, uh, stainless from China. Uh, so I don't know where they're getting the steels from and then putting the handles on them. But it's a kind of a cool little blade shape. Um, but again, really not something that I would ever carry with me. But it was a nice gift. And I keep it and it's from her and uh, it means a lot. Oh, what does that say? It, says, it actually says Ridge Runner up here. I don't know if you guys can see the lettering on that. Uh, but 
it does say Ridge Runner, so I'm not real sure if they were trying to remove that or what was going on. Um, so I don't know. She bought this. Oh, she was on vacation somewhere and found this and thought of me and wanted to buy it for me. And I think the guy put it off as, oh, yeah, I, I handmade everything on this thing. And I think he probably did the handles. And that's probably the extent of what was handmade on that thing. So I'll put that one right there. Hmm. I don't know, guys. I, this one's this is difficult for me to choose. So I'm going to go with this. This is the knife that started it all when it came to small fixed blades. And I've done a video on fixed blades and why I feel like they're better than folders, etc., etc. But here's the story behind this knife. Like I said, I never thought I would be a fixed blade person. I never saw the interest in small fixed blades. I never really did until I started to, my job that I'm working with right now. And in this job, every once in a while, I come across situations where I have to open up um, a bags of like large 50 pound bags of like different types of powders and um, chemicals like salt. And my wife had bought me this Kershaw assisted opening pocket knife for work. And I used this thing for work for many months. Uh, you could see the wear on it and all the things that it had done. And I had had to put a little edge on it. But the problem I was having, and I have shared this before, is all those powders and all those things that I was opening was getting caught in the pivot. And it got to the point where... I couldn't even flick it open anymore. Literally, I had to pull the knife open to get it to work. And this is a free spinning pivot. Yes, I think I can get a T8 on that, but the other side is nothing and it spins. So literally there's nothing to grab a hold of. So anytime I was trying to clean this knife, it was a real hassle. So I got thought to myself and I saw this in a big box store. CRKT, a name I recognized. I did a little bit of research and found that it's actually a pretty quality blade. So I bought this thing. Um, now, this does come with a sheath and it's either meant to be a neck knife or carried vertically, I believe. And I adjusted the clip on this thing to be carried on the front horizontal. And I fell in love with that design. I fell in love with being able to just pull it out of the sheath real fast, being able to cut, boop, pop it right in. It never bothered me. I'm in and out of my truck all day. It never bothers me, never pinches my stomach or anything else. Um, and it ended up being a really cool blade. And you, you can see I put a lot of wear on it and uh, this thing has been sitting uh, up on the shelf for a little while. You can see it even has some rust in there, but um, this thing, just was a great little blade. And this is what sparked my love of small EDC size fixed blades. So I see it as a fixed blade that has all the components of a pocket knife, but you don't have to flip it open. It's all right there, ready to go. So that has kind of started my love for the fixed blade world. Um, and I'm going to share some other stuff with you. Next up was something that I found at a show. Uh, my wife and I went to a craft show and there was a guy there selling knives. And he was selling all Damascus steel knives. And he talked to us and I love that blade shape. Nice small blade. Very similar in, as far as blade shape goes to the CRKT. Just a little bit bigger. Uh, and it was really great. The handle is very long. Uh, definitely can get a full register, full handle grip on that thing. Um, and it's very comfortable. It comes with, came with a leather sheath to be carried vertical only. And this was made by Templar's Choice. So there's the website, guys, templarschoice.com. Um, and they did really good work. Look at that file work. Really good. Um, the jimping is up here. 
yeah, your thumb right there on the jimping. I would have liked the jimping a little bit farther up because my thumb ends up going up here, but the jimping is great. It really locks you in when you're trying to get to those really deep cuts. Um, the Damascus is beautiful. I think this would be considered a ladder Damascus. Uh, I'm not really sure the wood that they used on the handle, but it looks really nice. The pins have done very well, and it's just a very high quality blade. Um, they did a really good job. Uh, they make their own Damascus. And uh, I really give them credit for doing that. Even the bolster right there is Damascus, actually. So very good job for them. So I picked that thing up at the show. It's never been anything that I ended up carried, but it's just part of the collection and something that I cherish. So uh, please, templarschoice.com. Check them out. I'm not really sure what they have, but they were... Um, they were at that show and it was a really cool thing. I think they're out of uh, Jacksonville or Georgia. So not really sure. Oh, St. Augustine. So they're way, way up in St. Augustine. I am in Orlando, so I can say way up, but it's really for some of you that might be not very far. Um, all right. Next up was a recent purchase that I did. Um, so I saw the opportunity for this knife to be that was being put up. And I had to jump on it. So what this is, and some of you have just seen it recently, this is the Knight Elements Hummingbird. This is a really cool knife. I will say that it's right up my alley. Um, I'll put this card right here. You guys can see knightelements.com. Check them out on Instagram. And if you have any email, it's right all right there. Uh, <clears throat> he. Jason Knight is the owner of Knight Elements. He's most notably from Forged and Fire, Judge, uh, and he makes amazing uh, knives, amazing fixed blade knives, and some folders that are pretty cool too. But he is known for that nice recurve, that nice harpoon edge, uh, the crew grease style blades. He, that handle shape is totally his style. And he decided to come out with something that was small, uh, EDC sized little fixed blade, but has all the elements that is him. And I love it. It's acid etched really well. It's tumbled really well. It's the perfect size for me, perfect size for any everyday carry use, opening packages, cutting rope, opening boxes, um, breaking down a box if you need to, Really great little blade. Comes with a nice sheath. Uh, I don't know if that's probably not the Kydex, but it's a plastic sheath. I ended up put one of my pull -dot, uh soft belt loops on it instead of the tacked clip that they came with. Made it much nicer and easier to carry, not as bulky. Again, I like to carry mine front, right side pull, horizontal carry. Uh, so... Really great blade. I'm really happy with this. Um, this was a uh, something that he did on Kickstarter. And I had to get in on it. I think I paid $68. It's Austin Steel. So really, really cool little package. Uh, I care, I've been carrying this thing a bunch. And it's been great. I love it. It's, it's right up my alley with the small EDC size fixed blades. It's perfect for anything that I need. And it really reminds me of some of the knives that I make, except that was styled. And it's and it's gone into production or he's trying to get it into production, which is what the Kickstarter was for. So I really wish him luck. They have them in the green, black G10 and the OD green G10 right now, but I'm sure coming down the road, we'll probably get some different colors and options on that. Um, I don't know what retail is going to be. Like I said, because it was a Kickstarter, I ended up getting it for $68, I believe, which I'll take that. That's a really great deal for that little blade for $68 with that kind of shape and that package. I'll take it every day. So it was a really great knife. Um, so this is kind of what... Uh, what I have for fixed blades. There's only one other one I'm going to talk to you, but I want to share 
Well, I'll, I'll share it with you and then I'll get into some of my knives that I have in the collection, which I don't know if it really counts. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think it counts if the, I made it? I mean, it's part of the collection. So what this is, is one of my, this is probably my favorite. And I'm going to take everything else out of the way because I really want to focus on this one. Um, actually, you know what? I'll leave the hummingbird there. You guys can drool over that one. So what this is, this is a custom knife that I met a gentleman at a knife show. And I, well, I probably would, should hold it on the camera, huh? And this blade was on the table. Not this exact one, but a knife very similar to this. Except the one on the table was Damascus with like mammoth tooth scales and it had this filing on it and it was beautiful. But he was asking almost $500 for it and that's way out of my price league. But I could tell he was in the style that I liked, the size that I liked. So I hit him up. And I just started talking to him. Of course, I'm putting fingerprints on this blade. And he said he could make me that model, but maybe in something a little different. So what this is, 440C steel. I asked for something that was stainless. And he asked me what handle material I wanted. And I picked out some black micarta. And he ran with it. Now, he took it upon himself to round the crown, which is one of my favorite things on a knife, is a nice rounded crown. He ended up putting a nice mirror polish on the blade, which normally that's not something I look for, but he said the knife called to him to do that. But he also left the nice raw steel look here. And I really love that raw steel against the pie polish. Really great stuff. And then he asked me a favorite color and I said blue. And he ended up doing that with the lanyard and the bead. And this knife is just any, everything that I aspire to be as a maker. I still will pull this out, I'll look at it. I was carrying this for a little while, but this thing is so nice. I'm afraid to really carry it because I don't want to mess it up, actually. I really don't. Um, very comfortable in the hand. Um, I can get my three-finger register pinky on the lanyard. The jimping, he did all himself. He does really great file work. And this knife is just totally great. I can't say his last name, so you guys will have to... <laughs> I apologize to you, Jim. Uh, Honey? Honey? Maybe? But check him out. There's his website right there. Um, JimHoneyKnives.com Please check him out. I don't know what he has on his website right now. I, I haven't talked to him about this video. Let me... This thing... My fingerprints are so bad right now. <laughs> but check him out. He makes very high quality blades of all different shapes and sizes. This just happens to be a model he calls the Shriek, I believe. Um, and it was an amazing, amazing knife that he actually made for me. He says normally he would charge extra for the liners and the high polish. He's like, but the knife just kind of called to him and said that's what it needed to be. So that is my work of art that I keep next to me all the time. Uh, and it's just, it's awesome. And I, every time I look at this knife, it's what I aspire to make. Um, so Jim, thank you. I don't know if you're ever gonna see this video, but you've been a mentor and I really appreciate all the information that you've given me. Um, the only other knife that I'm gonna talk about before I get mine is one that, well, I tell you what, let me start with this. Um, this, the next one is the first knife I ever made. So what this is, the obsession, this is what I call it. Uh, again, I made it for myself. I like the blue, uh, the black micarta. Um, 
Yeah, so this was the first knife I ever made. Um, and for the most part, it's pretty good. Very comfortable. The handles are a little blocky. Uh, I really cut it down. This is 3 16 of an inch uh, 440C steel. I did round the crown off a little bit, but I also did a high bevel on them for some reason. I don't even remember why I did that. I think I messed up on the grinder and I said, well, I'm committed to it now. And I went ahead and did it. Uh, but it's comfortable in the hand. And this started out as a drawing. And then I made a blank out of it. And I obsessed over this knife. And um, I reached out to a credible maker. He is a very credible maker. And I asked him to make me this knife based off of a wooden blank. And he did, um, but there were some communication issues and some things, and I'm going to show you what he made me, I, but I don't take it out very often. I don't even talk about it very much because I'm really not proud of it. I really don't like it. It didn't come out the way it was supposed to. I wanted something like this, but I got that instead. Um, so the blade shape, a little bit different. That one's a little bit bulky. Um, the handle material is, uh, I forgot some layered G10, which is fine because he showed me a picture of this material and I was fine with it, but the sh handle is much more bulky than it needed to be. Um, the blade steel couldn't be any thinner. Um, he did tell me the blade steel thickness. And at the time, guys, I was super ignorant. I had no idea. I was just excited somebody was making me a knife, making my obsession come true. And so I was like, whatever you think is best. I told him I wanted it for everyday carry. And this is what he came up with. Um, so that person will go unnoticed or unspoken. I'm not going to say who he was or who he is. Um, but this is what he turned into me. Um, and I'm not terribly excited about it when you want to think, look at the quality that somebody put into that handle compared to this blocky handle that they just kind of glued on and was done with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think I was bugging him so much, you know, I, it, so I don't know. It is what it is, but I don't talk about that one. That was going back in the drawer, back in the drawer. So this was my first knife. This was my second knife. This is the column. Um, again, I had some 3 16 440C red liners this time. Um, and you can see it's starting to get a little bit better. Then I started playing with some other steels. This is 1080, but eighth inch thickness. Uh, this is another column, so you can see how the column kind of changed. I put the hole up here, maybe redid the top of the blade a little bit, um, changed that up a little bit, and this is kind of where the column ends up. Uh, these are blades that had blemishes or something wrong with them when I was making them, and I decided just to keep them myself. Uh, this is a Cardinal. Um, I ended up keeping it myself. Uh, I forgot why. I think some something going on with the liners, or I know what it was. I didn't like this area of the blade where the bevel came up. I didn't like that. I ended up taking this and sanding it down to a thousand grit to get that nice high polish in it, and I really achieved that. Um, hello. So I achieved that. So that's a cardinal, and these are what I keep. And last but not least is the Bloom. Uh, this is my everyday carry. I carry this with me all the time. Really super thick 440C <laughs> uh, for such a small blade. Nice rounded edges and I beat this thing and it's holding up pretty good. I've had to sharpen it a couple times, but this is the Bloom, this is mine. This is my first attempt at multiple handle scales or multiple materials so that came out pretty good it's fairly even which is the hardest thing to do um but i i i, I like it and i carry it with me all the time
And that, my friends, is the collection at the filming of this video. You never know where it's going to go. You never know how it's going to change. But this is it. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. Uh, check me out on Instagram where you get to see some of the things that I've been making. Like this guy. So if you want to see more of that and where you might be able to buy one of my knives, check out my bio. Check me out on Instagram. And like every, like every video, guys, please... Like, subscribe, leave a comment, or not, that choice is yours.